Today is all about doing an experimentation with V2X, which is a lot of initials, but it's essentially communicating from vehicles to just about anything. So whether it's a piece of infrastructure, it can be a pedestrian, it can be another sort of object. So this allows a number of things to happen. Uh, it allows the cars to have a great deal of extra information about them around the world around them, uh, and provides a lot of safety benefits. I think for, for a motorist, for example, then you'd be able to see the overhead gantries that you see on motorways now virtualized in the car. So it will give you live, real-time messages as to what's coming. It will give you a lot more advanced information of things like roadworks, adverse weather. The V2X technology does allow a car to see through a car that's in front of them. So if they're following a bus, you can't see the brake lights. With V2X technology, you'll know if the car in front of the bus brakes heavily. There's two different short range uh, communication technologies. One is called DSRC, which is based on uh, the Wi-Fi standards. So every, the same sort of thing you would see in your home, slightly modified. And the other, the other short range um, technology is called CV2X, cellular V2X. That's based more on the four or 5G cellular technology. But there are, there are different advantages to each of those. Um, and it's up to the road operators which they choose. We also uh, communicate back from the car using the normal cellular service uh, that you have on your normal handset. In fact, you know, what we're demonstrating here today is using a very, very standard Nokia handset to see exactly what uh, a user could see in a car. Well, as part of our connected test bed, uh, we put in two different technologies. One is the cellular based things that we've seen today. The other one, the, the Wi-Fi based system, that we're also uh, trialing at the same time. It's important for us to put those things in because people have a need to come and test these systems out before they go out onto the roads. And the worst thing to do is to put out something that's half baked, not finished, doesn't work at the edges. It may not work at high speed, low speed. There's lots of combinations that we can assess here in total privacy and it's confidential. And so when it's ready to go, then you can launch it. Uh, the idea of what we're doing here today is demonstrating two different technologies, but showing really what's important is the messaging itself and trying to get across. We've got a couple of uh, vans out on the track at the moment. Um, they've each got a number of uh, devices in there. So uh, as, you, as you look around, you, you can start to see uh, the vans moving. You can see on the left hand side pictures of streaming back from the vans and you can see them actually going around moving around our, the city course here. Well, we're going to take a, a run around three of our tracks. Um, so first we're going to look at the city course which is a, a slow speed course originally designed for durability on engines and cooling systems but really good for maneuvers and as we're seeing uh, putting messages on there for vehicles to interact with because a lot of these things are going to take place at low speed with different steering angles uh, in a city environment. There's a couple of different areas we've set up for them to see. So we've seen we've got some in-vehicle signage um, which is uh, one of the uh, technologies of use cases of V2X and that allows us to replicate uh, signs from the road network. So. You can imagine if you're driving along a, a motorway, you can see the 60 mile an hour limit or the 50, the lane closed. Um, so this could all be replicated into the car. Uh, we can also uh, give distributed warning messages um, such as stop vehicle ahead or dangerous curve ahead or uh, accident or, or stranded vehicle obstacle in the road. Uh, and we can even um, put up their weather warnings using this sort of technology as well. Uh, when we progress onto the high speed circuit, it will appear on this, uh, on this phone app here as a virtualized gantry, as if there was a series of motorway gantries around our high speed track, um, just showing you what the speed limits and the lane condition was at each one of those. So you'll see a virtualized gantry on this screen here which will show that the two outer lanes, and now it's appeared at the top, that we have to travel from uh, lane one and two into lanes three and four, because they're gonna be closed soon. As we drive round, the next virtualized gantry will appear, which is a red X. 
which is do not drive in this lane. That will appear as we get to it on the top of the phone screen just there now. And that's giving us a 50 limit. So we have two lanes closed, 50 limit. So a little further round, we discover that there's still two lanes closed, but now the limit has dropped to 40. So instead of building three, four, five gantries over a road like this, then if you virtualize it, then you're getting exactly the same view as what you would get if you're looking at the real gantry. And now we have a 30 limit. Now this is just the sort of conditions. Now we've gone to national speed limit because we've cleared the hazard. But that sort of condition where you're setting a 60, 50, 40, 30 limit, you can't do that on the public road, obviously because of the safety implications and you defect with the users. I think what we've seen today from, from some of the, the people that's in the consortium, like Vodafone, for example, they've developed an app that works on a, on a mobile phone. Um, which makes it available to lots and lots of different vehicle types. Uh, you don't have to pre-install anything. Um, and so that way you can start and get active really quite quickly. The, the key thing is, is running that messaging center where you set the messages up in the first place, how it's delivered to the vehicle, whether it's a car, a bus, a truck or a coach, uh, doesn't really matter as long as the, the information gets through. So the key thing is, is, is getting real-time messages that you can rely on. The advantage of this over something like Waze, which is crowdsourced, is you can trust the data and very often it will be verified uh, several different ways before it's actually transmitted. So if we're warning about roadworks, then you know, the, the guys who actually put the roadworks there will tell the road operator the roadworks are now in place. Because it's broadcast by the road authority, the people that run the road system. So whether that's uh, the highways people or it's the local authorities that do that as well. So it's from a trusted source. You know it's there, you know it's going to be accurate. It would work really well with vulnerable road users. Uh, so a really good example uh, would be if uh, cyclists had V2X technology, they don't even need a display. So if you're uh, a cyclist and, and you're uh, cycling around a big city, uh, with large lorries and wouldn't it be great to know that the lorry driver knows you're in their blind spot and doesn't turn left onto you in the UK or right in, in Europe. Mm -hmm.